let's start on the real estate section of this thing, and let's bring in our guests here. Okay. Miss Roxanne Kulner of Keller Williams and Paul Apetix of East Cap Mortgage. Hello. How are you? Roxanne, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you, Jeff? You got to pull that up a little bit closer. I'm good, Jeff. How are you? Are you happy to be here? You look uh, excited. You look I like am. you're ready to go. I am. I love the hair and makeup people. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? <laughs> they are wonderful. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, you guys are going to have to share a mic here, so it's going to hear a little squeak, 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 but uh, we'll get by this thing here. So All right. uh, earlier today, Patrick was talking about tax credit, and I'm sure this weekend is probably like the last weekend for it, to go look at houses that are open. Mm-hmm. During the week, you'll have appointments to set to get in there. But, I mean, this is the last open house weekend for to, to utilize this tax credit. Absolutely. This is the last weekend to get through any open houses that nice. you might be interested in. Tell us from your perspective, what do you, how do you find the real estate market now? I mean, with this tax credit in, in mind, I mean, is it, is it like on fire or is everybody just doing this tax credit thing? What's your take? It's hard to tell. I mean, typically this is our busy season in Rochester. The snow has melted. We're not knee deep going spring up to time. properties. It's mm-hmm. springtime. Yeah. Um, is it an incentive? Yes. I think that people have stopped and really thought about whether they want the $8,000 or they want the house because it's that critical time. You do have to be under contract by April 30th, which means everything has to be signed. Okay. Um, so it's hard to tell. Okay. You know, maybe next week we can talk about if it was the tax credit or if it was our spring market. Yeah, we'll know real quick, right? Well, we got the stats, and they look like they're huge, up 9.3%. Yeah, in the first quarter of Rochester, the Rochester area, the GRAR announced. That's pretty huge, right? I mean, first quarter of the or year. Or is that normal for springtime, you think? Well, we, like I said, spring is our big market. We have a, yeah. a little bit of a lull in August, um, and then we start back up in the fall until Thanksgiving. So it's really Not hard to time. tell. I think our spring market was a bit earlier. Okay. Yes, um, the as weather witnessed was... by the salt stains on my boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the the actual weather was about a month er- warmer, you know, a month earlier, the spring weather. I mean, it was beautiful through March. So, and that's unusual here. Um, we usually get a nice blizzard in March, but but uh, this these Jeff, I want to just say this this is for the first quarter. So, this is January, February, and March numbers. I know. So, it's not even including the spring time. It doesn't include right? the spring. So, that's pretty hot. I mean, I'd say the market. Well, yeah, next next uh, quarter we'll find out if, mm-hmm. you know, April was yep. as big as they think it was going to be. But Cool. I'm going to call Roxanne. I'm getting you on speed dial then. Awesome. <laughs> Second quarter, I'm calling you. What's up? <laughs> it's cool, huh? Right. And maybe we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got, um, we just talked about tax credit, but we wanted to do like a first time home buyer seminar with you guys. Now, do you guys ever do that, like uh, rent out a room and say first time home buyer seminar or home buyer seminar, bring people in and they ask you questions of what's going on and how to do this process? I mean, it, I think it'd probably be good to just redo the process just to let people know, even if you're going to, if you bought a home, just to refresh your memory. I mean, it's been a while since I've bought a home and I've kind of forgot about the process, you know? Well, it's um, the shopping part's the fun part. Um, for the putting, ladies. <laughs> for ladies, right? Uh, putting together your wish list. I mean, if it's your first home, you have an idea of the kinds of things that you like. Um, if it's your second home, you've been in a home, you know what you don't like about the current home you're in. Um, you put together your list. Uh, you meet with the realtor. Hopefully me. Um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I'm psychic. <laughs> Shameless self-promoter. <laughs> so, wrong with that. <laughs> nope. So um, you put together that wish list. Um, perhaps it's a style of home that you're looking for. You go and take a look at the inventory and your price range. I mean, at that point, before you, after you put together your wish list, you'll meet with someone um, like Paulette mm-hmm. who will tell you how much house you can afford and then maybe even have the more important discussion of how much you want to afford. Right. right, because a lot of times we can afford a lot more um, than we want to. We yeah, want yeah. to. That's um, true. And you discuss those things, and then you come back to me, and we start looking. And it's an editing process, you know. Now, when you when mm-hmm. you sit down with somebody, do you just have them like a? Let's say somebody's never bought a house, because I had a guy, a realtor, tell me he says when I first bought my house, he goes, "You'll never be in this position again. You don't have a house to unload. You can buy anything you want. You'll never mm-hmm. ever be in that position again." So this is a a nice time to be in because mm-hmm. you don't have one to unload to get into a new one. Do you ever like those people? I mean, do you have to kind of tell them what 
to look for? I mean, they probably don't have a clue what to look for as far as a, a house for a first-time home buyer. I think that buying a home is like finding a date. I mean, we all have an idea of what we think we want, and until we start actually looking, looking, mm. that's when you start to know what you want. Okay. Interesting. I could go in such a terrible direction with this one, but I'm not going <laughs> to yet. Don't go there. <laughs> I could take this south for the winter. <laughs> We're talking about real estate. Oh, that's right. Um, <laughs> thanks for correcting so me. So we got, uh, okay, so, I mean, do you ever you ever talk somebody into like a, a bigger home? I mean, I mean, if first time home buyers are usually like, I'm thinking like 1600 square foot caves, three bedroom, you know, smaller type homes, mm-hmm. small yards. I mean, just the first time. Are you trying to find out if Roxanne's unethical and jams people into overpriced no, houses? No, 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 or? no, no. I'm just trying to think, is there, <laughs> no. I mean, what's the process here? Well, it's funny because um, I don't know if listeners out in radio land know that Jeff is a really tall man. And so if he came and we talked and he said, oh my gosh, I want a cape. It would take about one cape before he's like, I don't want a cape anymore. Oh. <laughs> so this, yeah. You know, so, I mean, a lot of it is process. Talking people into bigger or smaller homes, really, it's um, it, it boils down to what do they have the stomach for? What can they afford? What do they like? I mean, uh-huh. you really have to let the home buyer take the lead. And get a feel edit, for it. And get a get feel, a feel for, for it, the old right. girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it's really, I mean, part of it is, really just getting people where they want to go instead of necessarily selling them because you sell them and then they feel like they're sold. Right. They oh, feel right. like they got the wool right. and just and got pushed through the system. That's true. Yeah. That makes you sense. Kinda... I like the big upstairs in my homes when I pick a home to date. Mm-hmm. I like the ones with the big upstairs. So, well, I know from I, like my past experience, <laughs> I mean, the house I've got is, you yeah. know, the one thing I would know definitely I need a garage because right now I don't have a garage and it's a pain in the ass without a garage. Yeah. And I would like to have a, a house with two car driveway. Yeah, that's cool. You, because I, I have a one car driveway and like this morning, you know, I, I accidentally parked it in front. The yep. wife's car was in the back. So I got to pull that thing out. And it's tedious. I, you know, I mean, it's just the little things like that that probably people you, don't even realize. That's you know what I mean? Do you ever uh, kind of steer somebody say, well, I wouldn't do that because of this? Or, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, they're looking at you. You got the answers, right? For, yep, for advice. Yeah, you know, you do. You do tr- bring people back to sort of their checklist of, oh, you wanted a double wide driveway in yeah. this case, or you said you wanted a garage, but sometimes what they the, find the house, is they the found their home and it doesn't have me right. all that thing. But. Makes sense. That makes sense. Now, um, people never buy, I, I was in real estate for a number of years, and people never buy what they say they want, right? Buyers are liars. They're, that's right. Oh, that's no, the, <laughs> I don't think it's that. I think, like I said, everybody comes in with a checklist. You've never heard get, the term buyers are liars? She has, too. I, She's just PC. You're being politically correct this morning. No, no, I just think that, that um, that's kind of um, not necessarily... Um, they don't True. know what they want. They don't want. know what. They I mean, really, yeah. it's an ed- like I said, it's an They'll editing process, this, and you take they, it. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. you you change your mind. I mean, how many houses do you show, and on an average, just picking stabbing in the dark, on an average, one client or one buyer, in you know, in, in terms of like uh, you know, every buyer you have, do you show them X amount of houses on an average before they buy? It depends on the client. Um, yeah. It depends on how I, well thought out sort of their checklist is. Um, how well. Um, when you get out and show them two or three houses, if you know you've communicated well with them, okay. listened well, um, it doesn't take many. Yeah. Um, if they in fact were in love with an idea of a certain type of house, and they get there and they're like, "Oh, darn!" This wasn't you know, it. like I loved English tutors until I went in an English tutor, and I was like, oh, "No, no, exactly. still, <laughs> you know, still beautiful from the outside, still love the copper gutters, still yep. love the whole look of it, but." No, rooms yeah. are too too small or cr- too chopped up or whatever. It's an older house with yep. dated things. Yeah. In Not there. even dated because that doesn't even really bother me. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. all about like, oh look, gold speckled for mica. I kind of like it. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's mm-hmm. a place for everything, but um, mm-hmm. it, it just depends on where they are in their home 